Hello, I'm Bob Lachina of E3UK from MonarchCapacitors.com. I also run and own MagLoop.com, and those are subsidiaries of my uh, parent company, which is Pyramid Mach Machinery. And what I'm going to do today is talk a little bit about the uh, capacitor plates that I manufacture um, and show you how easy it is to uh, put together your own capacitor using the parts that I supply. Um, with these parts, you can make high efficient, high voltage uh, variable capacitors. I offer a few different configurations, but today we're going to talk about the butterfly configuration. These capacitors are used in things like magnetic loops. Uh, that's what I find most people that buy these are interested in. Uh, however, there are other applications that you may have, uh, uh, tuners, uh, various things like that. What I do is I, I manufacture these plates uh, using a CNC laser technology, so they're very precisely cut. Um, these particular plates are, are, are cut from um, 40 thou or 0 0.040 um, of an inch uh, thick aluminum. And a capacitor uh, plate set of the butterflies consists of three pieces. We have the rotor and we have what are called two stator plates. Okay, the rotor, the rotor uh, rather, um, if you look in the center here, is actually keyed. It's got a hex, uh, hex, uh, hexagonal shape. And the reason for that is when I manufacture the capacitors um, for turnkey operations or into, uh, for inclusion to my magnetic loop antennas, the mag loop, uh, I use a, a hex rod, which is aluminum hex rod right here, and it'll fit nicely uh, into the uh, key. It's a tight fit, but I machine things to, for close tolerances on purpose, but uh, force it through here, there we go, it pops it through. And the idea there is that it will not ever slip or come out of alignment. That's the whole idea of the hex rod. The problem with most uh, home brew uh, um, situations is that if you don't, unless you have access to some machine tools such as a, a lathe, um, it may be difficult for you to use this hex rod. Um, to give you an example, I take the hex rod and what I do then is I turn down either side of the hex rod and then I add threads on both sides as well as a uh, a rounded area here that will go into a bushing. And the idea then is I stack the plates here and then I tighten them down with, with the uh, aluminum uh, uh, nuts that I have as well and it holds everything tightly stacked and then you can sandwich this in between your two end caps. Um, now I realize not everybody has access to this and doesn't necessarily want to pay for somebody to machine it. So what I'm going to show you today is that we don't have to get that fancy. We can be just as effective um, in using just regular quarter inch uh, aluminum threaded rod, which I supply. It's very inexpensive to buy. You can buy it uh, online and many uh, shops uh, offer it uh, very reasonably priced. And all we really need to do is we take the hex rod and we thread on a nut onto the end of it. In this case, I'm just going to mock up a, um, a uh, 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 eight plate uh, capacitor and there's going to be quarter inch spacing uh, between each of the plates. And what I have here are some quarter inch uh, um, um, spacers that I'm going to use to space out the, the, uh, the plates. So what I do is I slide the first spacer on like so. Then I take the um, rotor and I pop it on there. Put on another, uh, another um, spacer. My stack of rotors over here. And I will put them on really quickly here just for the sake of time. Not a, it's not a hard uh, process whatsoever. Um, difficulty, if you want to call it, that comes when you want to line all the plates up so that they're equally spaced. I mean, it's not difficult. It's just a little, little time consuming, uh, consuming, and I'll touch on that. Okay, so then what we do is we put the last spacer on. I take another aluminum nut, and I'll thread that down. Probably would have been good for uh, some time-lapse photography here. I'll just hold the other side and spin the whole rod. Probably looking at that thinking, okay, that's a mess. They're not really in alignment. And as you can see, not using a hex rod, they, they tend to want to go wherever they want. But what I've found here and what a lot of people have done is this. Very simple. You probably already guessed it. Just put them on a flat surface, line them up like so, tighten them by hand. And then what you do is you take the uh, in my case, I'm using uh, um, 
seven sixteenths uh, nuts. So I will then grab both sides, make sure this is uh, pushed firmly down against the flat surface, and then I can tighten them. Whoop! Oh, oh, there you go. See, I wasn't keeping it pressed. Now I probably need an extra set of hands here, but let me loosen that up, get them all back down where they're supposed to be, and. There, okay. So now what I've done is using a simple rod, and I supply these rods if you need them with your kit. Um, they're not gonna move anywhere. I mean, yeah, I'm sure if I really reefed on it, I could uh, get them to move, but you know, in an application, they're not gonna go anywhere. Okay, so there we are. We just put together a real quick uh, rotor plate uh, consisting of eight plates. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the same thing with the, uh, the statter plate. The idea with the statter plate though is they're, they're, they're just, it's not keyed, doesn't need to be keyed, just little round quarter inch holes. So I take another threaded rod, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a nut onto the end of the threaded rod like that, and second threaded rod, and put a nut on the other end of that threaded rod. Drop a spacer on, drop a spacer on, and drop that on top of the spacer. Another spacer on either side, like so. Another plate to stack on, spacer, spacer, plate, spacer, spacer, plate. Okay, I'm not gonna go through the whole thing, but as you can see, I've stacked up uh, four plates here. I would do another four in this case because I'm building an eight, eight plate uh, uh, butterfly capacitor. And once the last plate or spacer is put on, I would take another nut, I got using aluminum nuts again, and I would torque it down, holding this one, and put it tight so they're not gonna move. They're gonna be in, in, in perfect alignment. The plates are straight, so when you tighten them down, they'll, they'll have even spacing. And then of course, you know, if uh, once this is mounted into the uh, capacitor, the plates would move through. I'm just kind of giving you a little visual here of how that works, okay? So the next, the next challenge, if you want to call it that, would be what we call the end caps. We need something to mount this uh, and the, uh, the, 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 the uh, statters uh, too. Of course, there's gonna be another set of statters on the opposing side, correct? So what we can use is, I like to use things like plexiglass. Here's a piece of plexiglass that has just some protective uh, paper still on it. And what I will do, these are five inch uh, capacitors, which means that uh, if you look at the, uh, uh, the pattern um, and, you, and you butt the capacitor close together with all of its parts, um, the mounting holes would be exactly five inches square, five up and five across. And of course in the center, dead center is where you're gonna put the, uh, uh, the rotor um, shaft. So you need to drill, you know, this has got to be very precision. You know, the, the straighter it is, and the most, more even it is, the better your capacitor will, will keep its uniformity throughout the whole rotation. So we drill the four holes here, the one hole here. We do that on, on two different, you know, obviously two different uh, pieces of plexiglass. Um, I also use phenolic, which is basically like PC board material, obviously without any traces on it, that, that's good to use. And you can even use wood for that matter. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Um, Another neat trick that I thought uh, might be, uh, well, uh, before I get to that, when I build my capacitors, if they're remote control or remote tuning, like they are for my, uh, my uh, magnetic loops, um, I will then also rivet on or bolt on one of these um, um, motors, DC motors, which you know, I supply with uh, the controller, um, and that allows me to send voltage down the line to this and turn the capacitor. Now, that's a real, it's only a one RPM motor, so it turns really slow. Um, if you're gonna do something you wanna turn by hand or you have a different motor, it turns a little bit faster. The other thing you can do um, when you're working on your end caps, and this makes things really easy, is you can mount one of these planetary uh, drives or gears, whatever you wanna call it. It's like a, uh, a gear reduction, I guess. I forget, I think this is an eight to one. So eight turns to the knob uh, will equal one complete turn of the shaft. So what you could do, and this doesn't take any machining, I mean again you have to drill a hole and mount this onto your uh, mount this onto your end cap, but this fits nicely with the um, 
uh, the threaded shaft here, there's a couple set screws here you'd tighten down and in, in, in essence then when you turn that, you know, it would turn that. Of course, I'm just doing it by hand there, it would be much slower. So you can always mount a, uh, a gear reduction, or not a gear reduction, but a reduction drive. Um, these are available online. I can provide them to their 10 or 15 bucks a piece. So I think I've touched on just the general aspect on how to build these things. I mean, you know, your imagination is uh, your limit. Um, you can create bushings for the ends for smooth movement if you want. You don't need bearings, anything like that. I mean, these things aren't, aren't turning at any appreciable speed. I mean, at the most, it's going to be one RPM for one revolution, and you've gone right through the whole frequency range. And so it's just a matter of keeping things from moving. You want them firm and in place, no wobble. And of course, when it stops, you want some kind of friction to hold it there so that the plates don't move back and forth, changing your, your capacitance, of course. And if it's in an antenna, your SWR and things like that. Um, the one thing I wanted to mention too, I should have mentioned at the beginning, when you, get, when you buy these plates, um, they're precision cut, they're pretty much ready to go, but you will see there may be some uh, uh, rough edges here, um, just through the, the machining or the cutting process, sometimes it melts there. Uh, you can buy this little a tool similar to like this, or maybe even some memory cloth, and you can just pop the stuff off just like I did that. As, as well as you'll notice that the, uh, the plates, they could be a, a little bit of a tight fit when you slide them onto your shafts. Um, again, it's just like deburring it, you want to deburr the plates. And uh, one reason you want to deburr the plates, depending on how many watts you're planning on putting through the antenna, a little burr or sharp edges will allow um, lower voltages to arc across and you might arc across the plates. So the smoother the plates, less rough, less rough edges, less uh, uh, things like, uh, ch you know, things sticking out there, less chance you're going to uh, have a flash over on your, uh, on your plates. So that's it. If you have any questions, um, I'm always available by email. Uh, feel free to call me. My Michigan number is 248-247-5937. Um, happy to help out and uh, give you advice uh, or assistance where I can. Thank you.